Hi guys, and welcome back to another brand new video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create this beautiful faded look in your photos just using Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. So the first thing you wanna do is simply go ahead and choose a photo. Now, what's really nice about this effect is it works with all style of photos, from portraits to landscapes, from photos shot in the summer and photos even shot in the winter. So what I recommend doing is experimenting, see if this effect works with your style of photography. Now I'm actually using a photo, or today's example, it's a photo I've recently taken in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. Now as you can see, this is the photo I've taken. It's a portrait photo, although I have got a landscape version. And I'm really, really happy with the composition. Position. I like how it's a leading line to the main or Grand Teton, which is the main mountain in the mountain range. So what I'm gonna do firstly is go over to the develop panel on the right hand side, and then I'm gonna drop down to the basics panel. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually change our white balance. So what I recommend doing for this style of effect is going for the correct white balance. You could shoot a little bit warmer if you wanted to, but I find the correct white balance works with my style of photography. But if you do wanna warm it up a little bit, I recommend going to the temperature slider and just adding in a little bit more Kelvin. So for me, because I shot this around midday, I'm gonna to go to my uh, actual temperature slider here. I'm gonna choose 5600 Kelvin. And I'm actually going to leave the tint alone. Now, this photo, as you can see by the histogram in the top right-hand corner is a little bit dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the exposure here. I'm gonna brighten that up by around about one stop. Add a nice amount of brightness to this photo. Then what I recommend doing is going to our contrast slider. And because we're gonna be creating a more of a mattier, faded look, I recommend adding in a, just a little bit of contrast, not too much, because again, we're gonna be emphasizing and changing that in the curves adjustment layer in a bit. Now, because this is a very snowy scene and there's a lot of white in it, what I recommend doing is going to the highlights here and simply dropping that down. I'm gonna drop it down by around about minus 60. This will add a little a little bit more information, prevent any information from clipping. As you can see, there's a lot of snow in this scene. So what I recommend doing is just lowering that highlights a little bit. And with the shadows here, because again, there's a lot of shadows in this scene, I wanna show a little bit more information there. I'm gonna go to my shadows here, I'm gonna get, increase that by plus 20. Then what I recommend doing is going to your white and black. As you can see, there's not a lot of uh, information in the whites and blacks here, so we wanna add a little bit more of a contrast but only to the white and black regions of our photo. I recommend going in and adding a plus 10 to our whites and then a minus 10 to our highlights. What we're doing is we're stretching that dynamic range. Although we are gonna be creating a more of a faded look later on, we wanna increase the amount of dynamic range as much as possible. So when we add that faded look, it's more natural looking. It isn't, um, it doesn't just look like it goes straight into kind of gray. It has got a little bit more of a dynamic range than a standard photo. So doing the whites and blacks there is a little thing that you can do to just is simply increase it by a small amount while still keeping the photo looking natural. Now, because we're working on the landscape photo, I recommend going to our texture here, increasing that by around about 5%, but not by too much. Then with our clarity, I increase that by 15, but if you're working on a portrait photo, so photo with people in it, what I recommend doing is actually going to the clarity slider and dropping it by around minus 10 to minus 20. What that'll do is that'll smooth out the skin tones, but because we're working on a landscape photo in this example, I'm actually going to increase the clarity. And then dehaze, because there's gonna be a little bit of haze in this photo as obviously the, the actual um, mountains are quite far away. I'm gonna go to my dehaze slider here. I'm gonna add in around about 10% there. But again, experiment with these main sliders here, the texture, clarity, and dehaze, because they may differ depending on the effect that you want in your photo. If you'd like to learn more about what is texture, clarity, and dehaze, go to this video here where I explain a little bit more in detail of what they do and how they impact your photo. Now what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna change the vibrance and saturation. We're gonna save that for when we go into our color mixer tool. Okay, so once we're happy with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the basics panel and we're gonna go ahead and open up the tone curve. Now this is where we're going to be creating our main faded effect. So what we're going to do is we're gonna open up our point curve here. So we're not gonna be working in our parametric curve. We're just gonna be working in our exposure tone curve here. And then what I recommend doing is going right to the very far left. So this is our pure black input value of zero. And we're gonna to go to our output value here and we're gonna increase that 
I35. What this will do is it will raise any color of pure black and raise it to the output value of 35. If you'd like to learn more about what the input and output values are in the curves adjustment layer, go to this video here. It's a masterclass tutorial all about the tone curve. But today we're just going to be showing you how you can use the tone curve in a creative way to create color grading effect. So what we're going to do is have our input of zero and output of 35. Now this photo now looks a little bit washed out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our mid-tones here by adding in a point and we're going to simply drop that down and bring it back just below our main 45 degree line here. So we're actually darkening the mid-tones ever so slightly. Then what I recommend doing is going to the highlights here and raising that up ever so slightly. So you can see we're creating a very subtle S curve that falls into a very strong kind of faded matte effect. Now, if you want a stronger matte effect, you can simply raise the input value of zero and the output value needs to be higher. So I like output value of 35, but if you want a slightly less of a stronger effect, so a slightly more subtle effect, you can drop that below 35 or you can increase it. If you increase it too far, the matte effect looks very, very strong. So I love just going for a slightly faded look. So I find around output value of 35 works quite nicely. But again, experiment, see what works for your photo. It might be too strong or not strong enough. That's something you can always change. So once we're happy with that, we're gonna turn off the tone curve and now we're gonna go over to the color mixer tool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and affect our hues first. So we go from red all the way down to magenta. Now we're gonna leave the red and oranges alone for the main reason is that that's predominantly where the skin tones are found. Now, obviously there are no skin tones in this photo, but if you have got skin tones in your photo, I try not to affect the reds, oranges, and even sometimes yellows because it could impact, maybe add a little bit more magenta to the skin tones. It makes it look a little bit odd, a little bit peculiar. So in most of my color grading effects, I rarely affect the red and orange unless I'm doing it on purpose because you never know accidentally you might be changing some of the skin tones, which might not necessarily work. So what we're gonna do is gonna leave those two alone. We're gonna go to our yellow slider here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop that down by minus 25. This will add in a little bit more oranging to that yellow there. And there's again, not much in this photo, but it might be appearing in your photo. Next, we've got our green here, so we could do exactly the same, minus 25. So what we're doing is adding in a little bit more yellow to the greens there. Next, we're gonna go ahead to our aquas, and we're gonna actually increase those. We're gonna increase those by 30 and we're gonna do the opposite when it comes to the blue so we're gonna go that we're gonna go for minus 25 what this will do is it'll add in a little bit more of a teal effect to our photo and it really works with this kind of mattier look what we're doing is we're actually kind of pushing ever so slightly some of those colors and bringing out a little bit more of a harmonious look to our photo and then what we do with purple and magentas we're gonna leave those alone Next, we're gonna to go to our saturation sliders. Again, leave reds and oranges alone. With our saturation of yellow, what I'm gonna do is increase that by 25. Next, we're gonna to go to the greens. We're gonna increase that by 75. Then with our aquas, we're gonna drop that down by minus 40. And we're gonna do exactly the same for the blues. Drop that down by minus 40. Then lastly, we've got our purple here. We're gonna drop that down by minus 70. And lastly, with our magenta, we're gonna drop that down by minus 50. Now, as you can see, we've made quite a dramatic change inside the saturation of our color mixer tool, which is why we didn't impact the vibrant and saturation tool in our basic sliders. Because although the basic sliders are great for changing overall global changes with our kind of color mixer tool here. It gives us a little bit more of a uh, customizable look and we can be a little bit more surgical of what colors we're adding and subtracting from our photo. Now, at the moment, it does look quite washed out, but that's because we're gonna go to our luminance slider and affect the brightness of those colors. Because don't forget, when you affect saturation, you're also affecting luminance. So we can add those colors back in again using the luminance sliders. So what we're gonna do, Again, we're not going to impact the red and orange in this example. What we're going to do is drop down to yellow. What we're going to do is increase that by 10. Then we've got our green slider here. We're going to de decrease the brightness there by minus 60, as you can see. Then what we're going to do is actually increase the brightness of our aquas and blues by 20 in the aquas and 20 in the blues. And as you can see, we're brightening it back up again, adding in a little bit more saturation, although it's still looking a little bit washed out. It's 
it's added in a little bit more saturation to that, which I think is really nice. Okay, so what we're gonna do, as you can see, we've done all of the changes in our um, HSL. So if you want to, you can quickly screenshot. These are the changes that I recommend doing for this faded effect. Okay, so what we're gonna do is turn off of our color mix at all. We're not gonna go into the point curve today. What I recommend doing now is going down to our lens correction. Now, at the moment, as you can see, I've got these turned on, but if I turn them off, you can see our peripheral illumination changes the photo and we're adding in a little bit of a vignette. So what I recommend doing, making sure remove chromatic aberration is turned on as well as enabled profile corrections and that you're making sure that your lens profile has been activated. So as you can see, I was using my Canon RF 7200mm f2.8. Okay, so once you've got that and all turned on, again, if you do wanna remove any chromatic aberration and any further, you can go into your defringe, but in this example, because I was actually shooting a f16 there isn't much chromatic aberration in this photo okay so i'm going to turn off a lens correction and what i'm going to do now is drop down to effects now in effects this is where you can add in your vignetting as well as where you can actually add in your grain now me personally i don't like adding in grain but i do like adding in a small amount of post cropping vignette so what i recommend doing is going to your amount slider i'm just simply going to go ahead in in minus 10 there because our kind of main subject, aka the Grand Teton, the main mountain, is in the center of our frame, we can add a little bit more interest to it by darkening the surrounding edges. And we can do that by creating a vignette. Now, obviously, if you'd like to add in grain, that's something you can do as well. But in this example, I'm not going to do that. And then lastly, we've got our calibration tool. Now, a calibration tool is a great way to color grade. A lot of people don't use it. I just think because a lot of people don't really know what it does. But if you'd like to learn more about the calibration tool, make sure to go to this video here where it's a masterclass tutorial all about what the calibration tool does, why it exists, and how you can use it in a creative way. Now, in today's example, we're actually only gonna impact the green and the blue primaries. So what I'm gonna do is go to my saturation of green. I'm gonna drop that down by minus 10%. And then I'll go to my blue primary saturation and drop that down by minus 10%. I also like going to the blue primaries and also taking that ever so slightly over to the left, but not by much, probably around about five in this example. But that's pretty much all I'm going to do. Okay, so lastly, we're gonna turn off the calibration tool. Now, pretty much we are done color grading, but I do like using masks in my color grade to kind of emphasize certain areas and take away interest in others. So what I'm gonna do is go to my masking panel here what I want to do is kind of really emphasize the main mountain in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new mask. I'm gonna create a radial mask. I'm gonna make one right in the middle, go for something like so. And all I'm going to do is simply increase the exposure. So I'm gonna brighten it up ever so slightly by around about a quarter of a stop or 0.25. And then what I wanna do is take away interest from the bottom. Now to do that subtly, we're actually going to use a linear gradient. So I'm gonna go ahead to create a new mask. I'm gonna drop down to linear gradient. I'm gonna hold down shift on my keyboard and bring that up to around about the same height or a little bit higher than that water level. And then what I'm gonna do is simply drop that down ever so slightly by around about 0.5 of a stop. So uh, 0.5 on my exposure there. And there we go, I am pretty much done. Another thing you could do is you could actually mask out the sky if you wanted to and change the exposure or even change the brightness. But in this example, I think I'm going to leave it alone. And as you can see, creating a faded look takes no time at all. And again, highly recommend using masking. So what I can do is show you the before and then show you the after. And as you can see, it creates a beautiful color grading effect. And there we go, guys. That is how you can create this faded look in your photos just using Lightroom. And of course, if you wanna support this channel and buy this preset, go ahead to the link in the description. I'll place my online shop where I sell a whole bunch of Lightroom presets as well as video LUT. So if you are interested and wanting to support the channel, make sure to go to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.